I have found that one of the most important ingredients to quality car repair, whether you're repairing it yourself or having it repaired, is to use good quality parts. That's why I've been using and recommending Napa parts for many years. They fit, they work, and they last. And they have the Napa name backing that up. Professionals do not like having to do a job over, and that's why so many professional shops use Napa Auto Parts. My guess is that you don't want to do the job over either, and that's why you should use Napa Parts also. So for a Napa Auto Parts store near you, go to NapaOnline.com and search for the store that is most convenient for you. You'll also see a lot of neat specials and some very useful information. So get the good stuff. Get Napa Auto Parts. Welcome to the CNC Auto Show. Each week, we give you a chance to get free advice, tips, and information about your car, truck, or SUV. So sit back and relax. Stand up by live at the CCB Studios, our experts, Aaron Clements and John Ryan Booney. And welcome to the CNC Auto Show, and I am Aaron Clements. And I'm John Ryan. We are here to give you information on ways to make your car, truck, or SUV safer, to make it more dependable, and to make it last longer for less money. This is a special show we're having today. We will not be taking phone calls because we'll be talking about automotive systems, but you can send questions to ccautoshow at gmail.com, and you can also watch past shows at the CNC Auto Show channel on YouTube. And our theme today that we'll be talking about is automotive systems. Now, before I mention what system we'll be talking about, I want to mention that if you need to find a good professional repair facility, go to NapaAutoCare.com. And if you'd like to purchase parts, including light bulbs, wipers, and uh, water pumps, and just whatever part that you can think of that goes on a car, you can get it by going to NapaOnline.com. Do the quick search of the length of, of the distance that you want to go to, and you can find the Napa Park store that's closest to you. Now, on previous shows, we discussed the braking system, the steering system, and the power strain system. And during the first segment, we'll give you a real quick overview of those systems, and then we'll cover the systems later on in other systems later right. on in the show. And John Ryan, earlier we talked a little bit about the braking system. We'll just do a really quick overview of that part of it. Okay, that's pretty simple. Uh, of course, brakes is very important. Uh, most people like brakes on their vehicle, <laughs> as far as I know. Um, uh, it's very simple. Uh, of course, you have a hydraulic unit that's actually forcing fluid out to um, calipers or, of course, wheel cylinders. Depends what type of brakes it has. And that hydraulic fluid actually forces two brake pads together to slow down the brake pad or slow down the brake road. Yeah, I always describe it a little bit like a 10-speed bicycle with the little uh, clamping Caliper motion. Yeah, it just absolutely. clamps it, uh, clamps onto the... Yeah, perfect analogy. Just clamps it to the rotors and, of course, slows the vehicle down. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we talked a little bit about the friction material that's used on the brakes, and then we talked about the electronic side yeah. of the braking system, which is sensors in each wheel, uh, determines wheel speed. If it senses a wheel's going to lock up, then it will release some pressure yeah, that to that wheel, wheel yeah. to keep it from locking up. So that was the braking system. Then we talked a little bit about the steering system. Yeah, we did. We talked about a little bit what we consider kind of an older style system. Of, of course, that's going to be a gearbox system. Uh, we mentioned that the gearbox system have a, has a lot of moving parts. Uh, you know, it's got an idler arm, inner, outer tie rod, uh, drag link, you name it, they're on there. Uh, then they, you know, kind of got a little wide and smarter and technology kind of came about and they went to a rack and pinion steering which was of course more efficient lighter less moving parts um, really good feel as far as the driver's concerned and then even now now we have a lot of electric assist uh, electric motors controlling power steering and the steering racks and whatnot so they've come kind of a long way and that is one thing that a lot of people ask the question they say why in the world if they had something that worked in other words the old type, type steering system which they do still use on yeah, uh, certain applications style. and certain especially larger trucks and things like that yeah but why in the world change but in the automotive world they're always trying to make, make things lighter in order to meet emission standards right, uh, yeah. lighter vehicles get better fuel mileage exactly. uh, and of course better fuel mileage usually equates to the cars getting better emissions mm -hmm. or, or controlling emissions better so always trying to make things lighter than they did before. So, of course, that's one of the things uh, of where the rack and pinion unit come along. It's just right. a much lighter unit. 
Uh, but actually, it's got a very good feel to it also. Sure does. Uh, so those are all things that work. Now, one of the next things we talked about was the steering system, and then we talked a little bit about the powertrain system. Yeah, we did. We just really quick touched on that. Of course, powertrains uh, exactly what it sounds like. It's what powers the vehicle down the road. Uh, most important, of course, you got your engine. Uh, something that takes a lot of abuse, of course, <laughs> is going to be the transmission. Uh, then it kind of depends on what type of vehicle you have as far as the final drive. A lot of vehicles are front-wheel drive, which obviously means that it's you know driven by the front tires. The transmission is putting power out to the front tires. Uh, if it's rear-wheel drive, typically it goes out the drive shaft to a rear differential. Um, and then, of course, there's obviously all-wheel drive, which in some cases uses both. Sometimes they're split up to where it's a proportioning thing. Uh, and then, of course, there's on-demand four-wheel drive where you turn the knob or pull the lever and it's locked in four-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the most important thing to me is, of course, the engine. Without the engine, the transmission isn't turning. So yeah. very important. Um, you know, there, there's anywhere from, you know, 100 horsepower engines to five and 600 horsepower uh, now. Um, you know, of course, no doubt technology's come a long way on engines also. You know, vehicles went from... 10 miles per gallon to 20 miles per gallon, some up to 40 and 50 miles per gallon. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, transmissions, just like, you know, the thing is, uh, years ago there was a two-speed transmission, three-speed transmission, four, five. Now there's an eight-speed transmission out, mm -hmm. uh, just like technology does. You know, it, it keeps, uh, you know, going more and more and more, gets better and better. Uh, after that, of course, your rear differential or your automatic transmission for your front-wheel drive. Um, again, those those have kind of stayed the same uh, yeah. as far as most part. And, you know, one of the things that you talked about was technology as technology moves. Every now and then you hear a person say, oh, I wish the cars were like they used to be. Well, do you really want that? Yeah, you do, you, do you actually remember the days when you used to sit out there on, on a cold morning and pump the gas a whole bunch and the car finally would crank up and then you'd cut the AC on and you'd have to wait a little bit to cut it on. Yeah. And then you would see a little small little defroster place to where it would finally start to to uh, defrost the windshield where you could see a little small spot. And, and you then say, maybe man, this car is good. 10 minutes you start getting a little bit warm yeah and the car started running a little bit better uh yep. after a period of time your gas mileage was like 10 miles to the gallon downhill do we really want that nah. <laughs> no i don't think so i wouldn't give it up no what, and not to mention if all the cars still did that as many vehicles that are on the road now yeah uh we wouldn't be able to breathe yeah uh, that's so right. so we have to do things to make the vehicles get better uh, fuel mileage we have to clean our emissions up as we drive driving yeah. these vehicles but also we don't got to these uh, the, to where we're used to this comfort i mean we're like riding in a rolling computer i mean how many cars do you here. get my my car as soon as i get in the ac won't work until like a minute later <laughs> <laughs> what's this about you know <gasps> my car hit 78 degrees i can't stand this yeah <laughs> my, my car's only getting like 22 miles per gallon <laughs> and that's uphill yeah so what we're looking for is we want the we want the, the comfort that's there yeah. and there's no way to do that without all the electronic controls that we're talking about That's now right. the electronics actually started on the vehicles because of the powertrain system right and one of the main reasons they started was not because somebody looked at it and said hey this would be kind of neat to do the federal government issued said, guidelines. Here's what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, this is what you will do. You will meet emission standards, and you will meet gas mileage standards. Right. And, of course, they had to find a way to do it. And they knew that the only way that they could do that is through electronics. Mm -hmm. And so they come back with the feedback system uh, with the computer first. And, in short, all that was was an oxygen sensor in the exhaust stream. Yeah, monitoring or an, it. an O2 sensor. And then a computer looking at it, and then a way for the computer to control the amount of fuel that went in. If the oxygen sensor says, hey, I'm rich down here, then it's it lean would lean, it the computer would lean it out. And if the oxygen sensor says, hey, I'm lean, it would richen it up. Well, it did that about 10 or 15 times a second at yeah. the time. That's faster than that now. But it, it did that very rapidly so that it would keep a fuel mixture of about 14.7 to 1. Ideally, and yeah. as they started looking at it, and they said, wow, you know, we can use that system on the 
on the powertrain on the engine itself why don't we start moving that into the engine and let the uh, in or move it into the transmission and let the computer control the transmission yeah just to, to do yeah. that just furthermore you know then get the said, shifts hey, down and everything we can let the computer control the brakes why don't we do that yep. and we can let it control help with the steering the steering product and so the next thing you know you have computers all over the place some cars 40 50 control modules right. on the vehicle that's controlling these various items that make it so comfortable to drive the vehicles. Exactly. And, and that's what's so exciting about the automotive field right now is you get, uh, is we're, we're constantly moving yeah. uh, with, with technology and seeing what's latest. I mean, uh, you get in now, and, of course, you have your Wi-Fi in a lot of cars. You get sitting exactly. in the back seat with their Wi-Fi. And, I love and, that commercial. I can't remember what make it was. One of them, uh, the, you know, all the kids were in the back watching their movies on the Wi-Fi, and they said, okay, let's get in this car. I forget what it was. <laughs> they get in, Dad, my movie's not working. Like, they were just totally wrecked, you know? It's crazy. And uh, when you were mentioning that uh, the old system, when they first feedback carburetor, I uh-huh. could tell you had nightmares about that as you were oh, saying Oh, yeah. That. Yeah, those were very tough. And that was, in those early years, what they were trying to do is take the computer system and let the computer move mechanical items. Right. And then the mechanical items would use vacuum to operate things. Yeah. That was a nightmare. And that was, I would say, the down point on the domestic cars. Mm-hmm. And that was mostly back in the, the 80s. The first computerized vehicle uh, on domestic cars come on General Motors, and that was 1980 and a half. Right. And that I remember it well. That was a very uh, tough learning curve to go through on learning how to work with the with the computer systems on the vehicle because they were using a standard carburetor, right? And a computer Moving would operate items and yeah. inside the carburetor. Well, let me ask and, you this: Why did Honda stick with that system way up into like eighty nine, ninety? I mean, that, that mm-hmm. those cars had more vacuum lines on it than mm-hmm. I mean gates rubber hose could make yeah and well they at the time that was the only way they could achieve the fuel mileage that they wanted right. to achieve now of course the the domestic cars they they knew they had to do something quick because we were fresh out of the, the muscle car stage yeah i mean when you're talking about the 70s and uh the late 60s and the 70s on the vehicles the vehicles were very large they had yeah. very Tanks. large engines and then the next thing you know the fuel shortage come along yep. uh late 70s uh, early 80s and we had a major issue we mm-hmm. had these large cars getting 10 miles to the gallon a lot of asian imports had vehicles that were getting uh like 25 30 yeah. uh, or more miles to the gallon they were small efficient and we were very large uh, but they were meeting those by Guidelines, not yeah. having their, all the technology, the computer technology wasn't available. Mm-hmm. So that was the only way they were able to do that and, right. and make them efficient is with all those vacuum lines. And then, of course, as the computers uh, become faster and, right. and be able to do more things with them, uh, then they they started to find ways to make the fuel injection work better or the system to work better right. uh, than they did before. And 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 things got uh, things become more and more computerized, and and of course right now they're even more so now than they've ever been before, and continue to be. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing continuing. Yeah, absolutely keeps yeah. getting keeps getting more electronic. It really does. Yeah, and and, and but with that, it it's also means lighter right. than it was before, uh, and in many cases working better than it did before. And really, what we're seeing because of all the things that uh, the uh, the diagnostics involved. The diagnostics can actually be easier. Well, wait a minute. Well, now. in some no. cases, <laughs> no, not right. always, but you're in right. some cases, you've got to figure that that a lot of the vehicles. We still get a lot of hard vehicles to repair. Yeah. But think of the ones that come in and the computer almost tell us what's wrong with the vehicle. That's right. There, there's no doubt about that. And the, the thing I like to make people aware of, yeah, there's computers that tell us what's wrong with it. And there's sensors that help us out. But guess what's in between all that stuff? Mm-hmm. A wiring harness. Yeah, yeah. And and one wire or one shorted wire or something like that, that may be in the right rear taillight, but it can, may control the number eight fuel injector. I mean, it's just crazy and th- and that's the issue that they have with a lot of people that like to do the job themselves they say well if i put enough parts on this car it's fixed. then it's got to it's got to repair it yep well what you're not looking at is you have those wires in between there any of the wires could be bad but also in a lot of cases just because you put a part on don't mean it's going to work the yeah, computer to. has to know that that part's been put on there that's right 
and been and it's been calibrated to go on that car. So there's even window motors. Like Somebody you, may have a window motor that don't work. Yeah, when you put a hard drive in a computer, it's not just going to work. Yeah. You know, same thing. You, yeah, you have to de load the driver. That's right. And in a lot of cases, that's what you're doing. When you put a new part on a vehicle, uh, you have to, um, it's almost like loading a driver. You have to calibrate it to say, this is where it's at. Yeah. And it has and to it know has the this starting. calibration number. It, exactly. exactly. And, yeah. and then the computer has to calibrate that part. So yeah. It will know exactly what to do. So I don't want to hear nothing about your feedback carburetor anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we have it worse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we're going to need to take a real quick break, and we'll pull over just for a second or two. When we return, we'll talk about the system that keeps you very comfortable. The only one people care about. Exactly. <laughs> we'll be right back. Take an ordinary putty knife and scrape off the old wax ring. Place the new wax ring over the flange then line up the bolts with the bowl and gently set in place, making sure a proper seal is created with the flange and drain. Next. Um, Dad? Uh, yeah, sweetie. Is that an old plumbing manual? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, honey. We really need to get some new books. Right, um, do you, do you want me to stop? Nah, I kind of want to know how it ends. Okay, tighten the bolts. Line up the flushing valve to the opening in the top of the bowl and secure the tank with a screwdriver and crescent wrench. <laughs> the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Thanks for listening to the CNC Auto Show with Aaron Clements and John Ryan Mooney. Two real live automotive maintenance and repair experts who actually work on all kinds of vehicles every week. So they're always up to date on what's happening in the automotive world. We'll be right back with more of the CNC Auto Show before you know it. So don't you dare touch that dial. This is Joey. Leave a message at the beep. Joey, this is Katie. You promised me you'd call in the morning and that was two weeks ago. Is your computer guy treating you like a bad date? Constantly missing deadlines? Not fixing things right the first time? Giving you the geek speak runaround? Katie, this is Joey. It's not you. It's me. I lied. It's you. It's time to break up and see other people. Make a date with IntelliSystems. President and CEO Kevin Wade. Rely on us for your technology so you can focus on your business. Hello, this is Joey. Joey! <sighs> At IntelliSystems, we answer our phones live. No technical jargon. We speak plain English, promise to respond in 60 minutes or less for most problems, and you often get someone right away. Well, hello. Our clients certify our industry best customer service. IntelliSystems, the small business IT department. IntelliSystems.com. If you're looking for a good used car, truck, or SUV, there is a place that I can proudly recommend that you can call. And that would be my good longtime friend, Philip Hawkins at Philip Hawkins Motor Company. I believe that Philip Hawkins Motor Company is the match.com of cars. They have a great gift of matching a person with the car that is just right for them. It all starts with an interview to determine what your likes and dislikes are. What is your budget and what do you need to do? Next, they interview the car, truck, or SUV by looking at its basic information and history. A representative will introduce you to your potential new vehicle and then let you two be alone to talk for a while. You would not believe the number of couples that come back and say that they would like to be as one. The next thing you know, they are riding down life's highway playing their favorite song on the sound system. So for the car, truck, or SUV of your dreams, go to match.com, I mean hawkinsmc.com or call 803-593-5990. Now back to more of the CNC Auto Show. Standing by at the CCB Studios, here's Aaron and JR. And we are back with you. I want to remind you that you can watch past CNC Auto Shows at the CNC Auto Show channel on YouTube. And the next system that we'll talk about during this show is the Supplemental Restraint System. I thought that would be kind of neat. There you go. Yeah. 
And and what's the most common thing that you think about when you hear supplemental restraint system? Well, of course, I think of seat belts, but it's obviously airbags and, and the control module that controls it. Yeah. Well, you are absolutely right there. And I was going to bring that up a little bit later near right. the end. Uh, but we'll go ahead and mention that in the beginning. Regardless of what we talk about during this part, uh, whether we talk about airbags, all these other things that we'll mention. Right. The seat belts are the most important part of the system. That's right. It's if like, you don't have that on, the other stuff are not going to do what they the should do. It's the first part in that equation of how they're yeah. trying to keep you safe. Yeah. Now, the first part would be, I would say, don't don't need them. There you go. That's true. <laughs> Try to avoid Riding with Aaron. the accident. But if you are involved in an accident, you do want to be protected. Absolutely. And, yeah. of course, the way you protect yourself is to make sure that everyone in the vehicle is buckled up. And, and when I say that, uh, sometimes we say, well, uh, if that person in the back seat don't buckle up, that's there. They'll be the one that gets hurt, not me. So I'm not going to work. Well, that's not true. Yeah. Uh, when little Johnny is riding down the road and 16 years old, and the person in the back seat is not buckled up, and he says, "Well, that's up to him." Right. But that other person in an accident is a flying object, mm -hmm. and a flying object can hurt everyone else in the vehicle. So you want to make sure everyone in the vehicle is buckled up uh, when you do that. And, and for their protection and the driver yeah. and, and everyone else's protection in there. Well, also. I mean, I think the guy, the person driving should be able to make that judgment if the person in the back seat is going to wear their seatbelt. So. <laughs> exactly. Now, one of the things that, that we're looking at is we started out with just an airbag. And, of course, when the airbags first come out, everybody was saying, oh, this is going to be terrible. The, uh, the airbags are going to cause more damage than the – than the accident itself. Right. Well, that turned out not to be the case. Exactly. Airbags over the years have saved thousands and thousands of people yeah, and, and, and helped in many, many ways to uh, for people not to uh, not to be hurt as badly as they would have right. if it wasn't for – if airbags wasn't ever there. Around. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, of course, with that, they've expanded on it. Mm -hmm. Now we have what other kind of bags? Oh, my there? goodness. And, of course, passenger airbag. You know, the first mm -hmm. one was drivers only, and then there's passenger airbags. Uh, then after that, we went to uh, curtain airbags, you know, the ones that go up the pillars. Mm -hmm. After that, we went to seat airbags. Yeah. Now they deploy outside. Uh, now they have rear cushion. I mean, some cars have 10, 12 airbags in them. Yeah, you know what I was thinking? What This is my idea. I got? think instead of having all these airbags, in an accident, the car just fills with a heavy foam. Like those little, <laughs> like a peanut foam, like you yeah, chip stuff yeah. with? So you, nobody, it, yeah, even if you roll over, everybody's fine. Yeah, I, I mean, think <laughs> if that was the case, people would do that for fun. <laughs> sure would. But you're right. I mean, we have airbags everywhere. There was a vehicle there the other day, I forgot what it was, but it had the knee airbag. Right. Not only uh, do the they pop out of the seat, they mm -hmm. pop out of the thing. But what's good about all this is they have better control of when these airbags come out. Right. They have exactly. actually had so many uh, scenarios now and so much feedback from the vehicles that are in there is they're able to give a lot of uh, a, a lot of data. They've collected a lot of data of when this airbag should go off, when that one should go off. Right. So you don't run into a vehicle that. Uh, that was a bad choice of words. Running <laughs> running, <to> pun <laughs> you, on words. Huh? You don't see vehicles now <laughs> out yeah. there that they have a small accident and every airbag in the vehicle goes off. That's right. You lot. might have one where one side airbag might go off. You have another one where a front airbag might go off. Well, too, the passenger presence system really mm -hmm. helped out with that. Uh, for instance, I mean, a large majority of the vehicles now have a passenger present system to where if there is no weight you know that meets a certain weight uh, mm -hmm. classification it will not deploy the airbag in that that area and two what that also does is a you know a 10 year old car that maybe only worth fifteen thousand dollars when every airbag blows in that oh thing, yeah it's, it's gone, gone. You're, that's boneyard car yeah. uh but when there's nobody in that seat maybe only the driver's bag goes off or maybe the driver in the curtain bag and then uh, on top of that the smart air airbags of course yeah. uh, and, and and of course if it's somebody lighter that's sitting in the passenger seat and right. they are heavy enough for the airbag to go off, yep. but it's sensing that they're not that heavy. That's right. It won't go off with the same force. Yeah, it has. What it, I don't know why they're called squibs, but that's uh -huh. what they're called, dual squib airbag. Yeah. Um, and and you're exactly right. You know, if if somebody typically the classification is forty to sixty five pounds, only the first squib or the first deployment loop will go out. Um, and, and that's come a long way because, of obviously, kids aren't supposed to sit up front, uh, you know, under a certain.
certain height and weight. And, and now, you know, of course they can with as long mm-hmm. as they meet that uh, classification. So long, you know, come a long way. And then, of course, you have your uh, your seat belts that have uh, the firing mechanisms yeah. in them mm-hmm. now. And the seat belts in an accident will actually pull tighten up on tighter you. with firing pins. Yeah. Is pretty much what it amounts to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you have those. Now, one of the the brainchilds of this whole system. Yeah, airbag or, module. Yeah, airbag module. Very important. Uh, you were mentioned about swapping parts. You know, hey, my airbag light's on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't just put a module in it. It, it mm-hmm. requires, you know, so many cars. You could buy a Chevrolet Tahoe just throwing a car out there. You can buy one with curtain airbags or one without curtain airbags. Mm-hmm. So just like Aaron mentioned earlier, you know, we have to program these things to, to know specifically what calibration it is, what RPO codes, which is the build code of the car. We have to program that in. Then we have to zero the seats and actually mm-hmm. go through a classification process to where it, it actually learns what type seats, what type weight, when to turn the light on, when to turn mm-hmm. the system off, uh, the whole nine yards. So it's, uh, again, just another system that has gone uh, basically electronic, full electronic. And, of course, in many cases, this airbag can store actual data that yeah. was there during the accident. Right. So the airbag ha- module has a lot more information going in uh, for several reasons. It, it has to know, are you applying brake pressure? Are speed. you What speed are you going? Yeah. So to know how much force to put the airbag out at. Right. How people are sitting here, there. Uh, a lot of information. Now, the, the tricky part is all of that information is stored in there. So that right. is one area. Uh, that there's been some controversy on is who, who owns, owns that yeah. information in well, an accident. Well, two, one, I always forget, you know, one of the most important they look at in a in the event of an accident or something, mm-hmm. run time. Yeah. If that vehicle has been running for, you know, 12 hours straight, that means somebody's been driving that car for 12 <laughs> hours straight, you know. There's a high probability, unless they pulled over and left exactly. it running. Well, of course, it, you know, then, they would pull they up would the graph. Well, they would pull up the graph of run time and vehicle yeah. speed, and that would tell you the answer right there. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it, of course, we always joke that they record what you're saying, too, and they probably do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there may be a conversation so, in there. <laughs> so don't say that old trick. Watch this. <laughs> and then they see all airbags deployed. That's yeah. not a good I, I, move. I remember that one. Hold, hold this and watch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> For sure. So try not to do that. Yeah, you don't you don't want to. Uh but but that that's a controversy that's coming up and of course that has um uh, help to give information about a lot of accidents also yeah. because and, that's one and of the two things. we always tie it to the airplane it's a black box it, mm-hmm. it tells exactly it's an event recorder so it's yeah. the same thing it tells a lot of information that you know may or may not be needed but mm-hmm. like you mentioned who owns that right yeah but in, in short the supplemental restraint system has saved a huge number of lives over For the sure. years yeah. And, and I and I think that uh, and and they continue to expand on it. Now it is an expensive system. I mean, they're all, it does add a price to of vehicles, course, yeah. no doubt. And and that part is uh, is something to think about. But when you're saving hum, uh, people's lives right. uh, as you go, I think that's the main thing. So we do want to make sure. Okay, it's time to take a real quick break. And when we return, we'll talk about a system that makes you really comfortable as you drive. We'll be right back. This entire piece of music was played with only two instruments, a right hand and a left hand. Hands can do incredible things, but nothing compares to using them to help save a life with hands-only CPR. If an adult suddenly collapses, call 911, then push hard and fast in the center of their chest until help arrives. Hands-only CPR is recommended by the American Heart Association, and it's incredibly easy and effective. Find out more about this latest method of CPR at handsonlycpr.org. The power to help save a life is in your hands. A message from the American Heart Association and the Ad Council. 
Welcome to the CC Auto Show. This hour is brought to you in part by your local Napa Auto Care Centers. Napa Auto Care Centers are built around a quality standard where independent repair business owners are invited to join based on integrity, qualifications, and expertise. That's how Napa Auto Care ensures that you get the best in class service that you deserve. From routine maintenance to major repairs, you are covered. And the great part is you are covered wherever you may travel. The work performed by ASC certified technicians at the Napa Auto Care Center that you visit is covered under a two-year, 24,000-mile nationwide warranty. With over 15,000 Napa Auto Care Centers nationwide, there is sure to be one near you. To find a Napa Auto Care Center near you, go to NapaAutoCare.com or you can call 1-800-LET-NAPA. I recommend putting that number in your contact list. It will be like having a friend in the auto care business everywhere you go. That's NapaAutoCare.com or 1-800-LET-NAPA. You're listening to the CNC Auto Show with Aaron Clements and John Ryan Mooney, two ASC certified master technicians who really appreciate you taking your time to join us today. We'll be right back with more from Aaron and John Ryan. So stay right here where you are for more great car care advice on the CNC Auto Show. If you're looking for a good used car, truck, or SUV, there is a place that I can proudly recommend that you call, and that would be my good longtime friend Philip Hawkins at Philip Hawkins Motor Company. Philip Hawkins has been very successful for two reasons. The first, that he was born with the gift of being able to listen to what a person's transportation needs are, then getting to know what they like and do not like, along with what they plan to invest. Then he seems to find the perfect car, truck, or SUV for that person. The second reason is it is build a reputation based on trust. People trust Philip and he has earned that trust. If you're looking for a nice used vehicle, I recommend Philip Hawkins at Philip Hawkins Motor Company. They are located at 2000 Jefferson Davis Highway in Graniteville, South Carolina. They also have a great website with pictures of lots of cars that are in stock at hawkinsmc.com or you can give them a call 803-593-5990. Again, that number is 803-593-5990. Worry dolls are very small and colorful dolls traditionally made in Guatemala. A person who cannot sleep due to worrying can express their worries to a doll and place it under the pillow before going to sleep. According to folklore, the doll is thought to worry in the person's place, thereby permitting the person to sleep peacefully. The person will wake up without their worries, having been taken away by the dolls during the night. Don't you wish it was that easy to get rid of your business IT worries? IntelliSystems President and CEO Kevin Wade. IntelliSystems has been around for 21 years. Rely on us for your technology so you can focus on your business. We answer our phones live. No technical jargon. We speak plain English, promise to respond in 60 minutes or less for most problems, and you often get someone right away. IntelliSystems, the small business IT department. Our clients certify our industry best customer service. Call us at IntelliSystems and put your technology worries at ease. No worry, doll required. IntelliSystems.com. Now back to more of the CNC Auto Show. Standing by at the CCB Studios, here's Aaron and JR. And welcome back to the CNC Auto Show. Remember that you can watch past CNC Auto Shows by going to the CNC Auto Show on YouTube. That's the CNC Auto Show channel that you go to. And you can also send questions to ccautoshow at gmail.com. And we are ready to talk about the next system on the vehicle. And it will be the system that keeps you comfortable. Yeah, that's uh, probably the most important one for a, a consumer Aspect. Yeah, <laughs> and that would be the climate control system. And there was a time where this would have been a really quick system to talk about. Yeah. But there's a lot more involved on the climate control system now than it was many, many years ago. For sure. And what part of the climate control system you think we should start out with? Goodness gracious. I, I guess most thing, well, around this area would be AC, of course. Yeah. The most important thing that most people want. <laughs> yeah, and, and that is true. You run into sometimes someone to come in and, and their brake pedal will be going to the floor. Yeah, and the tires will be uh, showing air, be ready to uh, be replaced. And then, but the AC is is the one that we want to get done first. That's the priority, and then yeah. we'll see how that goes, and then That's get right. the other stuff. And that is true. People are used to being comfortable. That's right. When they get inside their vehicle. 
And some of the things we'll we'll start with the AC system yeah. and just mention some components that the AC system includes. Okay, just real briefly. Uh, of course, the the most important thing for the AC is going to be the compressor. Yeah, exactly. Uh, of course, there's lines that connect all the the system together, but the compressor, the evaporator is what's inside. That's actually the temperature that the blower motor is blowing across. That's what gives you the cool air. Out front, there's the condenser, uh, which looks like a mini radiator, really, and it's always in front of the radiator. What it does is it actually removes the heat from the system. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's the cooling fan that actually pulls air across it, uh, and then let's not forget what it's full of, and that's refrigerant. Yeah, exactly. And what you're doing with the AC system is you're actually just circulating that refrigerant and letting it change states. Yeah. Uh, the refrigerant starts out as a liquid, and when the liquid goes through a little orifice tube, yeah. Uh, it, it it goes through that orifice tube and then it turns into a vapor. Very very cool. Uh, the yeah. orifice tube or expansion valve turns it into a vapor just before it goes into an evaporator. Now the evaporator is what's sitting inside the car, right? Fan blowing across it, and that's where your cool air comes from. Mm -hmm. And then the refrigerant is a gas, so we have to do something to get it back into a liquid. So then we circulate it uh, through the system, and, of course, it goes through filters during this time. Right. And dry. then it goes into a condenser, and the condenser is the part. It's the bug catcher that's in right. the front of the vehicle. Well, that's front. where all your bugs are sticking to on mm -hmm. there. And that's what messes up your AC, too, is all those bugs. Right. So you want to keep those out. But anyway, you always have to have air flowing across the condenser because what you're doing – is you're transferring the heat. Yeah. Uh, it, it goes through, well, it goes through the compressor right. uh, just before it goes through there, and it, and it compresses this under pressure, and, of course, Which pressure builds heat. up heat. Yeah. And then as you have that air flowing across the AC condenser, you're actually able to turn that vapor into a liquid. Yeah, it's a heat exchanger. Yeah, and then when it turns into the liquid, then it's able to make the process all around. Well, when you're riding down the road, you have air. that All that's fine, but then when you're sitting still – and and you're not moving. You have to have some form to let air flow across. Of yeah. course, older cars used to have a fan that was turning all the time. Off and it was blowing through yeah. there. Later model vehicles have a electric cooling fan that cuts on and pulls air. Right. So that is pretty much how the the air conditioning part of the system works. Right. All right. Then we move into the heater core part of it or the heater side of it. Right. The heater side of it is very similar. Of course, you have a water pump that you could – it's kind of like the compressor. You know, you have a water pump that's uh, serving many purposes. Of course, number one purpose for the water pump is to cool the vehicle off. But what it does is it takes that coolant, it pushes it through the hoses – uh, to the heater core basically it's like a mini radiator or a mini evaporator that's mounted inside the vehicle uh, typically in the hvac unit now, of course that's a box that has all the doors and the routing for the uh, the, the actual vents um, what it does is of course the coolant goes through it and it's it's exchanging heat again just like the radiator it's going to put off heat the blower motor blows across it and of course on down the vents you get heat uh, the coolant goes back into the engine and it cools it off in the radiator and then back into the heater mm -hmm. core and just completes the process uh, just like you mentioned. Uh, and, of course, the one thing, too, after you have heat and air, what what selects one or the other? There's a door mm -hmm. in there. Um, typically and that used to be simple. And that used to be you would move this lever and, and you would be physically and, and, moving it. Yeah, and you would actually move that door so that you could decide what you do. But now, instead, yeah. you moved a lever. Yeah. And what you're doing— Not even a lever. Now it's a knob. It, you, know, it's, you move the knob <laughs> or you move the little control for it. Yeah. And what you're doing now is you're requesting Yeah, you're AC, literally saying— Or you're requesting heat. Yeah. The computer decides whether you're going to get AC— or get heat. That's right. If it agrees so with you everything. you got to be nice to it. <laughs> you do. Yeah, if it agrees with everything, if all the inputs look correct, you know, coolant temp's fine, uh, you know, the compressor's actually on, it's cycling on, uh, there's no faults in the system, you're right. When you hit that button, you're asking that module or that computer, may I please have AC? Yeah. And uh, if it, it agrees with everything, it will actually request yeah. it to turn on. And some of the things that, uh, reasons why it may not agree with you is if it looks at it and says, hey, the refrigerant's low, I'm not going to mess up your air compressor. Yeah. So I'm not going to give you AC. I'm yeah. sorry. Or it has a cooling fan fault. A, a cooling fan issue. Yeah. It may may leave it off. Or a cylinder head over temp. <laughs> now, here's the big thing. What used to happen on cars many years ago 
is they would use vacuum to control these doors. Yeah. Even even automatic air system had That's vacuum right. that moved it. What do they do now? Oh, well, of course, those were kind of a pain, not necessarily to work on, but kind of just something that required periodic maintenance because, mm-hmm. of course, vacuum lines a lot would of vacuum crack and, and whatnot. So I am kind of glad away they got, they did away with that slowly but surely. Now you have, of course, elect- here we go back to the electronic uh, things. We have little electronic motors that – when you turn it to 80 degrees, it you know it dials that motor in and it actually physically turns the door for you and, and gets it to 80 degrees or whether it be cold, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. Um, there's, there's several different little motors in there. They actually call them actuators. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only is, are they there for the temperature, what temperature the uh, driver wants, but also where it goes. You know, do you want it on your floor? Do you want it in the vent? Do you want it on defrost? Mm-hmm. Uh, so those control that also. And what's a common concern that people come in and they mention having to do with the vent door? Well, a lot of times it's two things, really. Uh, It depends on what system, but if it's a dual system, it's, uh, you know, it's blowing hot on one side, it's blowing cold yep. on the other. Very common. Uh, if it's just a regular old system that's still electronic, a lot of times it could be, hey, my vents are stuck in one position. Um, so that that's that's one thing. And, and what we found on those is it's a, a little tiny electric motor. And, of course, just like anything, a, over a period of time, the motors can get uh, fatigued and, of course, break. Uh, but that's you're right, and uh, the tire could be flat, and they're riding in. They want the AC fix. Well, I thought when I mentioned that, though, you were going – you were going to mention that part about one side hot, one side cold. Right. But I thought you would end up making me make the noise. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and make the noise for us. He's, it, he's our soundbite guy. Uh, he custom here, does every a one A common them. noise that people mention that yeah. has to do with all this has to do with it, even right after you cut the car off, but usually after you cut the key on right. and cut the temperature down or mm-hmm. up, you hear something in the dash go. That was pretty good. That I wasn't that. bad, was it? Yeah, that was good. I think you I got th- it I think that. I, no, that wasn't quite. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah a little bit yeah. more of that. But anyway, that is those electronic actuators either yeah. bad or needing to be recalibrated. Yeah, and that noise, it makes sense when I describe it. Of course, it's just two plastic gears uh, that actually mesh and, of course, control that door. So when one tooth or two teeth break off of the, the gears, you can imagine how they would slip and make that noise. Um, the bad part about uh, those systems is, of course, where they're located. That's the unfortunate part about the all electronic. Years ago when it was vacuum, most of the vacuum lines would actually break out under the hood because of the temperature. Now it did kind of bring those repairs inside the car because they're electric motors. Mm -hmm. But the bad part is we always say that they physically took these little actuators, set them out on a bench and then built a car around them because they're very, very difficult to get to. A lot of times the dash has to come out Mm -hmm. uh, to replace them. Um, it is kind of ironic how it's always the one that's like buried in there that goes yeah. out, you know, and, and, and you were mentioning this about different computer parts and software. The cool thing is they are in most cases updated when it's a known vehicle that has this known problem. But there again, it's not something you can do in your backyard anymore. You have to calibrate these doors. You have to let mm-hmm. it know, Hey, this is the old part number. Here's the new part number. This is what we're installing program it for that calibration and then physically calibrate where full hot is or full cold or defrost or floor so it, it has come a long way to to you know short of just putting a part on there and hoping it fixes it yeah but it, it but it does make everything a lot more comfortable because now you don't have someone riding down the road saying oh i'm hot over here i'm cold yeah. over here and, and in issues like that, not to mention being able to blend the air even yeah. in the back of the vehicle. I think marriage uh, statistics actually went up when they did yeah. automatic temperature. <laughs> <laughs> that made a big, yeah, made a big, big improvement. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Okay, we uh, we're going. It's about time to take another break. Uh, when we return, we'll talk about an automotive system that um that makes it a lot more enjoyable hey we wait we got time to cover just a, a couple of more real quick things yeah, having man, to do trigger with happy i was wondering about that i want to mention this real quick that did, did i did i feel like it's real important that we cover in with the ac system and that has to do with making sure the system is serviced correctly it is it's, uh, it's what one happens, of the most expensive you know repair costs on a vehicle for it sure. is and what and this fits right into the category of when we were talking a little bit earlier about when the system uh is uh they're always wanting to make things lighter yeah lighter. and of course it used to be a compressor was really big and it had inside the compressor it had a little scoop that would pick up oil right. and it would sling it all around the inside of the compressor so the compressor stayed lubricated yep. 
Now, in an effort to make the compressor smaller and lighter, mm -hmm. because, of course, they want cars smaller, under hood areas are smaller than ever before, yeah. now they do not have any type of oil scoop. That's right. The only thing that keeps that compressor lubricated is the oil that is mixed with the refrigerant that's flowing through the system. So if you ride down the road, and let's say it's uh, it, it's November, not really hot outside, yep. and you filled your AC, and it's not really as cold as it should be, you say, well, I'm not yeah, going to worry about right. it. <laughs> I'm going to wait till summertime, and then I'll worry about it. Well, in effect, you're all that time you're running it, you are running that system low in oil also. So yeah. you're not lubricating the compressor. It's no different than running your car with a quart it, low. Exactly. So then when the summertime gets here, uh, Mar uh, uh, May, June, July, uh, hits here and you cut the AC on and mm -hmm. then you hear that loud. I was wondering when that noise make, was coming. You like that? Oh, that was a good one. And it's making that loud noise. You think that your compressor just went bad. No, yep. actually it, it went, went bad, bad in the winter time, time when you didn't need it. Yeah. But now you're here. It went, it went it. bad about Christmas. Exactly. And, and the compressor does run all the time. You're just not looking for the cool air anymore. That's right. Even, it's using the air to remove moisture from the air. Even on systems where it has to snowflake, you know, a lot of people think if that button's off, that AC's not running. Well, mm -hmm. the time you switch it to defrost, that, that, that AC system's exactly. running. So. so I'm glad we got a chance to cover that. We're going to need to take a real quick break. When we return, we'll talk about automotive system or the system that makes your driving, well, actually we'll say systems that makes your driving much more enjoyable. We'll be right back. While cutting molding with a 12-inch dual compound miter saw, while holding a newborn baby in your arms, when face-to-face -face with a congregation of alligators, with the ball in your hands and the entire freaking season on the line. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why parents. would you do it During while driving? On what NASCAR driver Casey Kane here, asking you to please stop the text, and together we can stop the wrecks. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Get the message at stoptextstoprex.org. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we've got a range of pep talkers standing by. Call 1-877-38-YOUR-GED or visit yourged.org and find free classes in your area. GED is a registered trademark of the American Council on Education. Brought to you by Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Welcome to the CC Auto Show. This hour is brought to you in part by your local Napa Auto Care Centers. If you're looking for a professional automotive repair facility to maintain and repair your vehicle, I recommend calling your local Napa Auto Care Center. Napa Auto Care centers are built around a quality standard where independent repair business owners are invited to join based on integrity, qualifications, and expertise. That's how Napa Auto Care Centers ensure that you get the best-in-class service that you deserve. From routine maintenance to major repairs, you are covered. And the great part is you're covered wherever you may travel. The work performed by ASC certified technicians at the Napa Auto Care Center that you visit is covered under a two-year, 24,000-mile nationwide warranty. With over 15,000 Napa Auto Care Centers nationwide there is sure to be one near you to find a napa auto care center near you go to napaautocare.com or call 1-800-LET-NAPA i recommend putting that number in your contact list it will be like having a friend in the auto care business everywhere you go thank you for sharing your morning with us right here on the cnc auto show hosted by aaron clements and john ryan mooney two ASC certified master technicians who believe in helping you make your car run better, last longer while saving you money and having fun all at the same time. We'll be right back soon, so keep listening. Buying a good late model used vehicle is normally a large long-term investment. It can be an event that will bring good warm memories or it can be an event that can bring bad memories. When you deal with someone with honesty and integrity, it will most always make it a good experience. That's why I recommend Philip Hawkins Motor Company when you're looking for a good late model used car. He has a proven track record of trust and integrity, and he's just a nice person to do business with. So if you're looking for a nice used vehicle, I recommend Philip Hawkins Motor Company. They're located at 2000 Jefferson Davis Highway in Graniteville, South Carolina. They also have a great website with pictures of lots of cars that are in stock at hawkinsmc.com, or you can give them a call at 803. 5-9-0. And again, that number is 803 803- 593-5990. CWR Digital is your one-stop shop for all aspects of digital media and content. CWR Digital. CWR Digital is your exclusive, full-service digital marketing services provider, offering local businesses of all sizes the same strategy and rate efficiency that has, until now, been available only to big national brands with huge budgets. 
CWR Digital. CWR Digital makes digital marketing more effective and more affordable. CWRdigital.com. Let's go back to the CCB studios in downtown Augusta with more of today's CNC Auto Show. Here's Aaron Clements and John Ryan Mooney. And we are back with you on the CNC Auto Show. And we are talking about automotive systems. And we are down to the system that makes driving more comfortable and fun. Or actually, I should say systems. Because I thought we might cover several different systems that make it a lot more fun. And, of course, what's the system that comes to mind, John Ryan, when we talk about things that make driving more enjoyable? Uh, I'd probably say radio. Exactly. Yeah. That was that was my number one also yeah. uh, when we talk about radios. And radios have come a very long way. They have, man. They went mm. from one center speaker in the dash to some vehicles have 12 speaker systems. You mm-hmm. know, you always hear home theater for your house. Well, really, there's no difference in a car. Some of them are just that, you know, car theaters. Yeah. And that was uh, part of what I was going to mention as we were talking about the sound system, also including the video system oh, yeah, no doubt. Uh, in there. Because, of course, not only do you have this uh, DVD, DVDs that, mm-hmm. that you can uh, just plug in and watch in the back seat. Uh, right. Then you have your D, uh, your CDs that you can listen to the music. And, yeah. of course, that's getting less and less yeah, often now because right. you're listening to your uh, iPod or, or other unit through the radio system. Yeah, just anything you can Bluetooth into that radio, you, yeah. can, you can play, yeah. And that goes hand-in-hand hand with the satellite system that you can listen to satellite radio, yeah. your AM, your FM, or right or any other source that you want to. Mm-hmm. And all of that makes it fun because if you pretty much if you can think of a song you that you want to listen to, yeah. you can find it some way as oh, you're absolutely. driving down the road if it just pops into your head. Sounds safe, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> <laughs> sure does. Yeah, you're right. I mean, and then one thing too, I always forget are the systems like OnStar. That that may not be a fun system, but it's mm. also a convenient one. Yeah. Uh, for instance, the turn by turn direction, the the you know assist. There, of course, there's several of them besides OnStar, but that's a very neat system i think yeah, it really it, is it is now also as we're talking about the video system we'll talk just a little bit about the navigation system yeah that's that's great too you know there was a time where gps units stuck on the windshield were mm-hmm. very very com- common now it's very common to have them right there in your radio screen mm-hmm. uh centrally located everybody can look at them uh and you know the years ago they were updated by discs now mm-hmm. they're actually updated through wi-fi in some of the vehicles yeah um so you know of course that's come a long way um and traffic alert traffic alert as you go down uh, right i mean you can even talk to them the my link system you know mm-hmm. like you mentioned hey play me this song or hey take me to this uh destination uh so a lot of you know driver features just make like reservations uh, over yeah, here exactly or, yeah what time are they open what time are they closed a lot of neat stuff well the, the find you know find a restaurant find a fast food mm-hmm. place cheapest yeah. gas that kind of stuff now, a lot of uh, a lot of other neat stuff that uh, they have, and to me, this is a great safety feature that they've started putting on the vehicles, has to do with your backup cameras oh, and yeah. your beepers that, uh, that well, they use. Well, just like you mentioned, backup cameras, but let's not forget, now you're, we're seeing more and more front cameras, too, mm-hmm. for parking. That's true. Um, so, yeah, your park assist, like you mentioned, that was great. I would say that was the first thing that kind of came out, the, the mm-hmm. bumper sensors to let you know how far away and, you know, of course, how close you were to something. Then they went to the rear cameras, which obviously, that was just even better not only mm-hmm. did you have the the system of letting you know about how far away you were from it now you can actually visually see it i, I do mention don't just only look at that because there are it, <laughs> there are blind spots no yeah. doubt um and, and of course now we have even the cameras in the actual rear view mirror instead mm-hmm. of the navigation screen well that um, that's to me is kind of neat also when you have a side camera you cut your right brink blinker right. on and you're able to see mm-hmm. that blind spot, uh, see that area right, exactly. over there a lot more clearer than you ever would with a uh, regular mirror. mirror so yeah. that's been mm-hmm. a been a neat mm-hmm. system also. Yeah. And of course, not to mention the uh, children ride, uh, uh, yeah, sitting going behind, behind your vehicle, and you're in a parking lot, and or in a in a, in a driveway, yep. most commonly. And you look in your rearview mirror, you don't see anything there, so you uh, so Put you back on up, yeah. and yep. of course. 
uh, accidents happen that way. But now with the backup camera, you're able to actually see what's back there Absolutely. Uh, that much better. So that's that's been a very, very good system. Okay, now another system that I think is kind of neat has to do with the adaptive cruise control. That is really neat, especially, you know, that's the kind of cool part about us working on vehicles. Of course, we don't know, own anyone that has a, a adaptive cruise control, but being able to drive different vehicles. And I guess what I'm saying is it's neat to see all the technology uh, you know, working on vehicles uh, that we're lucky enough to see uh, working on day to day. Yeah, I agree. A lot of neat stuff, a lot of fun stuff, a lot of things that makes driving more enjoyable. It's time to shut this hour down, John Ryan. Man, it blew by. All right, before you know it, we'll be cranking up a whole new hour. Uh, you can catch us on Facebook, and you can also watch this show and past shows on YouTube. Just go to the CC Auto Show channel and tune in and watch us there. Uh, also, you can go to WVOC and go to the click the CNC Auto Show icon, and you can listen to this show there also. And so I want to encourage everyone to keep those seatbelts buckled up and do not text and drive, and we'll catch you on the next CNC Auto Show.